I always liked crossbows. They're impactful, they're fun to use, and they may not be the most powerful weapons in Warframe, but they sure are subjectively satisfying. And today, my friends, we're gonna take a gander at one of the few crossbows in Warframe, the Nagantica, a mastery rank 9 primary weapon. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable that most Tenno should be able to build and a couple of variations on it. But of course, we also got the quote-unquote endgame set up with a crazy ribbon. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly approach. I'm gonna be taking my time and explaining whatever I feel is necessary for newer Tenno. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Nagantaka, or Nagantaka, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Nagantaka is a semi-automatic crossbow, so you gotta go shot by shot action. And being a crossbow, we got two things to bear in mind. Projectile flight speed, which is pretty decent, and an ever so slight, so slight, projectile drop off you see that projectile like going like this off into the distance yeah it, it went like that i don't know why that does but anyway it's only really gonna be a slight issue in super long range shots simply aim slightly above enemies heads and keep in mind this being a projectile based attack leading your targets with the nagantaka is definitely a thing but that's not all to this quirky weapon it also has a secondary fire mode so just touch your secondary fire mode <laughs> Just press your secondary fire mode and the weapon will automatically discharge or fire all the remaining arrows in the magazine. And yes, if you increase your magazine size, you can get a bigger wallop. So bear that one in mind. The fire rate is pretty solid and the recoil... Uh, <sighs> Well, on primary fire mode, just a little bit, and on secondary fire mode, it jiggles. It's almost, almost negligible, so bear that one in mind. Now let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is 60 out of 60, and if your comes with only 30 out of 30, jump into actions, plug in that Toro King Catalyst, and double that mod capacity. Is it worth it on the Nagantica, however? Hmm... It really depends on which side of the argument you're on. If you enjoy projectile based attacks, if you enjoy sticking it to your enemies, you know, sending them flying with that precise headshot and then they get uh, impaled onto a wall, then you're definitely gonna love your time with a crossbow, more specifically the Nagantica. But if you just want the most powerful weapons in the game, nah, basically nah. So bear that one in mind. An Oroking Catalyst costs 20 plat to install, you can grind one from Nightwave. Now my weapon has been format a total of 6 times and that might seem a little bit overkill because it is slightly overkill. I want to test a whole bunch of mod combinations, bunch of ribbons, etc, etc. For the build I'm recommending you guys, you only need to format twice. By default the Nagantica comes with one polarity, a V, and in the Exilus you're looking at a dash, which is advantageous. And since we're talking about the Exilus mod, should you unlock this one? Is it worth it? Yes or no? Well of course it's worth it. On any projectile based attack, going with terminal velocity will make your life easier when it comes to gameplay. Increasing the projectile flight speed would mean less leading your targets and easier aiming. So bear that one once again in mind. The accuracy on this one is gonna be 40. My friends, this is not a weapon for anything like heavy caliber. Your shots will simply go off the crosshairs. It's not worth it. There are plenty of other powerful mods you can use on the weapon. Crit chance and crit damage. You're looking at 15% with 2.3x. This is at the edge of worth it, but still worth going with critical chance and critical damage on the weapon with point strike and vital sense. A fire rate of 2.5 and that's key to the weapon and you'll understand why uh, just a tad later. Fire rate on secondary fire mode or the burst fire mode is gonna be 5.81 and speaking of which there's one thing that I did forgot to mention about the functionality of the Nagantica. If you manage to kill an enemy with a headshot your next reload will be faster. And since we're talking about uh, specific quirks of the weapon, this is Garuda's signature weapon. And if you're gonna use it with Garuda, the weapon gains a bit of punch through. And that's pretty much it, the functionality. Hopefully this time, I didn't forget anything. 
A magazine of 9, which is okay, noise silent, so if you're after silent weapons and you don't like to use something like Hearst Invisibility, this is definitely the weapon for you. Reload of 2.3, but this is without the reload speed increase. If you get a headshot kill, Riven Dispo of 4 out of 5. This is not a very popular weapon. When the Nagantica came out in 2018, we had the old 3 out of 5 Riven Dispo rule, which was... I guess it wasn't ideal, but even now with new weapons coming out with zero or like the lowest Riven Disposition possible is not exactly ideal either. I still advocate when new weapons come out so they come out with two balls out of five little balls. So that's fantastic. We're going to be able to leverage high power Riven. Status chance sky high at 39%. And when it comes to the damage, take a look. Impact, Puncture and Slash. And the very highest amount by a mile is going to be Slash. But... The Nagantica has guaranteed impact procs, so bear that one in mind. You see where I'm going with this, right? I told you the Exilus thing, and then the fire rate thing, and then the impact thing. You see what? I, anyway, as for the secondary fire mode, again, basically it's the same thing, but you get increased fire rate, same damage as before. Now let's have a look at a standard build, shall we? Damage with serration, multi shot with split chamber, and vigilante armaments, critical chance, critical damage combo between point strike, vital sense, the two 60 60 vital mods, malignant force, and rhyme rounds. And there's still one mod slot open on the weapon. Can you guess what this one is? Well, technically, two, but can you guess what this one is? Obvious, yes, hunter munitions, right? And initially, I will show you the weapon with Hunter Munition so you can see how she performs, but then I'll show you the real spiel of the weapon. You guys probably saw it coming like a mile away, but let me keep the mythos and the whole mystery thing. Uh, for the XLS mod slot right now, we're gonna go with Terminal Velocity and that 60% projectile flight speed. Now, let's make doubly sure that Protea isn't cheating with anything, no Sentinel or anything of the sort. Now, time for the level 120, Corrupted Heavy Goons, as per the usual. And we're gonna use a mix of both fire modes. Headshot, one shot on the target, mm, two, three. See, the problem is, I'm not gonna be getting a whole lot of slashes because the critical chance of the weapon by default is only 15%. And with Point Strike alone, without Argon Scope, I'm basically going to, what, 37 point something. So it will take a fair bit of... Shot this guy to get the slashes I need so he gets absolutely annihilated. Now for the secondary mode. Ba, 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 ba. This is how I play from mission to mission, honestly, simply because I like the fire mode. Ba, 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 ba. It's satisfying. It's weird and satisfying. Ba, ba, ba. You can't interrupt it by rolling. I should have mentioned that earlier, I guess. You can't interrupt it by rolling. If you don't roll, you can't exactly interrupt, so pressing R will not help you. With a build such as this, the weapon is not as consistent as I would like it to be, simply because you don't have that critical chance. And I know what you're gonna say, well, pff, obviously, you didn't use Argon Scope, and if you don't use Argon, you don't create the Hunter Mini, yeah. Let's use Argon Scope instead. Absolutely, my friends, you may have a point, so we're just gonna take off the option slot, Vigilante arm uh, Armaments, and we're gonna go with Argon Scope. This used to be extremely expensive, one of the reasons why I never really liked recommending the mod, but now it's not that expensive anymore, so there you go. You're gonna get extra critical chance on headshot, more critical chance out of the weapon will mean more slashes out of Hunter Munitions. So let's repeat the test. Here you go, one, nothing, two, nothing. Well, the first one shouldn't count, because no, like, no extra crit, right? Three, there was that three, was that like, no, that actually, that was four, because your magazine is nine. So, will it be a kill? No, it won't be a kill. The weapon is better like this. Mathematically speaking, the weapon is better like this, but as you can see, still not all that impressive. Let's try a couple of volleys as well. I like to call them volleys. They're not actual volleys. They're just, but I like to call them volleys, because it's satisfying to use, like suit. So. Uh, I never had an issue with an Agantica when it comes to uh, ammo. Okay, so even if you spam, like I spam like this from mission to mission, when you're coming across a heavy-duty target, this is the way to take them out, you know? So as you can see, the weapon is a fair bit more powerful like that, but we have one last solution for the build. Considering that the base critical chance is not all that hot, doable with Hunter Munitions and Argon Scope, why not go back to extra multi-shot with Vigilante Armaments, and go with internal bleeding instead. Now, this one is a brand new mod, was released a couple of weeks ago, and it says the following. Impact status effects have a 35% chance to apply a slash status effect. X2 when fire rate is below 2.5. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Well, if I was to compare this one with Hunter of the Munitions, this one has a 30% chance to apply, but on slash. 
right on slash. What's my slash 37.5 without argon scope? I can put on argon scope, go to something like 70-ish percent. So that's a pretty nice chance, a 70% chance to slash. And then if I get a slash, I got a 30% from hunter munitions. It would be better, right? But what we can do is go to the double, the X2, when fire rate is below 2.5. So you're going to get a 70% chance to apply a slash on status effect. And the way to do that is very simple. Through the weapon Exilus mod slot, you're going to go with something called Vial Precision. Take a look at this one. Basically annihilates weapon recoil and it also reduces fire rate. It drops my fire rate to 0 0.7. Here's the thing, I don't need this to be maxed out. Why would I? The recall is almost non-existent and I don't need to completely destroy my fire rate. So instead, what you can go for is an R0 vial precision. It will drop the fire rate to 2.2 and also reduce a little bit of that recoil. Huh? Huh? No, honestly, I didn't think of this one my, myself. My friend Zach told me. So thank you so much, Zach, for reminding me of this R0 trick. And you're gonna say the following, yeah, dude, fine, but internal bleeding, why would you even? The status chance is good, but your impact value is almost nothing. You're not gonna proc a whole lot of impact. Ah, but then again, Taka does have, like I mentioned earlier, guaranteed impact proc. So we're gonna test the weapon like so, my friends, like so. It's weird that I'm so happy about not playing with hunter munitions, even though basically I'm doing the exact same thing, applying slashes to targets, but through a different means. So there's that. A single shot on the target, two impacts, two slash, one vital. Take a look at that, my friends. This is an alternative to the standard all hunter munitions build. It is more powerful. It is more powerful from what point of view? It's more powerful from a slash application perspective. You can apply more slash like this. Mathematically speaking, you should be able to, unless my math is flaky, which is possible, definitely possible. Now, if I was to use the secondary fire mode like so, take a look at that. Absolutely annihilated that poor corrupted heavy goon. A whole lot more slash than before. There was 19 slashes in that target. Look at that. Beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. So you can go for an approach such as this. This is one of the weapons where internal bleeding realistically makes a difference. So wear that one in mind. Of course, you can still go for Mumu if Mumu is more your speed. Some players simply enjoy going for more critical chance. They like the pretty numbers on the screen. In that case, uh, drop vial precision, go for uh, terminal velocity, critical chance, Argon scope instead of uh, vigilante armaments, and of course, hunter munitions instead of internal bleeding. This, these are two different ways of doing the exact same thing, though. So, bear that one in mind. Riven mods! Yes, like I said, we can leverage that fantastic Riven disposition of 4 out of 5. Take a look at this one. It's a loner from a friend. Damage, multi shot, crit chance, minus ammo, max. Ah, beautiful. Ain't she absolutely gorgeous? I love this one. And as before, this is an internal bleeding build with Vile Precision R0. And we're gonna test it on the Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120. Now, with a roll such as this, an amazing roll like this one, your one-shot potential goes through the roof. Observe, one-shot on the guy, guy has 15,000 bleed on him, it's gonna be an easy one-shot. Now, all you need is about 13,000 bleed out of your, uh, look at that, 13,068, and it's gonna be a one-shot on the Corrupted Heavy Goon level 120. But the bleeds can get to crazy high amounts. You can get to something like 35,000 if you get the crits, the right procs, and all whatnot. That's 25,000, of course, a one-shot. That is gonna be a 13,000 or 14,000 one-shot. Make sure you still go for the head, especially considering the bonus reload you can get from this weapon. Now, of course, this is with a Riven, and not just any Riven, a pretty gnarly Riven at that. And I don't recommend weapons which are only good with a Riven, because that would mean, hey, go out and spend a whole bunch of plat or farm a million Kuva and hope you get a good roll. But then again, Taka is a creative weapon even without a powerful Riven, so bear that one in mind. If you do want to get a Riven, I would recommend you guys head on over to Kuva and try your luck on an unrolled Nagantica. Unrolled Nagantikas are super cheap. I think they're going for about 50 plat or less. Most people simply dissolve them. If you're looking for a stat priority for your Riven, I would go like this. Multi-shot damage crit chance. 
right? As for a negative, something harmless will do. You can go for minus impact as well, considering that the weapon does have guaranteed impact procs, even if you do go to minus 100% impact. So you can go for minus IPS, but I would go for something harmless. So bear that one in mind. And of course, there's still one more thing that we can do, my favorite section, the Warframe buff section. And we're gonna make this weapon go absolutely nuclear. When it comes to Warframe buffs, you do have a couple of options. You can go with Chroma, for example, but a better idea when it comes to Raw Force is Lady Mirage Prime. In this case, however, I got a feeling you guys want to see Lord Harrow. I was about to search for Lord. Yeah. Harrow! Harrow will give our weapon crit, which it doesn't really have all that much. But if I know I'm going with Harrow, yeah, a bit too edgy, a bit too dark this one. Why don't we go with Paladin Harrow? You guys like Paladin Harrow? Look at that. Or Priest. Was it Paladin or Priest? I, I forgot. I think this was Priest Harrow. And let's line up the fashion as well. There we go. Impaling Priest Harrow. Not important. What is important, if I'm gonna get my critical chance from Harrow, do I really need point strike on the weapon anymore? Hmm, let's think about it for just a second. If I take point strike off, I'm left with 44% from the ribbon, right? Harrow gives me 200% on a headshot with a full buff or 50% on a body shot. So I can definitely take it off, especially considering I can use Arcane Avenger as well. So 200% from Harrow, 45 or 45% from the Riven plus the weapon and another 45% from Arcane Avenger. So the question becomes, hey, what I put instead of this? More critical damage? Definitely a good idea. More damage, more critical damage. Critical damage, you can go with bladed rounds, 120% critical damage for 9 seconds. It's an on-kill effect, but it is the same amount as Vital Sense. A better idea in this case, considering we get slashes from the weapon, slash value, and the high status chance as well, is to go with... And I can't believe I'm saying this! Hammer shot! It's got a buff, what? It got a buff like last year, and now it's no longer worthless. You get 60% critical damage and 80% status chance, and in this case, it does really help the weapon. In this circumstance, at the very least. Now, when it comes to the actual buffs, corrosive projection against heavily armored target is definitely the way to go. But I don't want you to feel forced to go into this one all the bloody time. If your build calls for something like loot detector, energy siphon, or power donation, or whatever else, definitely go for the aura of your choosing. And always bear in mind, the arcanes are a lot more impactful. Arcane Avenger, R5, Third Eidolon down on Cetus, or uh, Orphix Venom. On damaged, a 21% chance for a massive 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. And that's a bonus additive after, right? It simply stacks on top of what you already have. It doesn't care about the base critical chance of your weapons. And I did say weapons, you know why? Because it applies to your primary, secondary, and to your melee at the exact same time. That's how powerful Arcane Avenger is. As for our second Arcane, this is a very good option, a solid option. Arcane Rage R5 on headshot, 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds. Granted, it's a 15% chance, but you're gonna have this one up basically almost all the time. It's time, my friends. For a Sentinel! <laughs> almost there. For a Sentinel, this being a primary weapon, you can use the Sentinel trick as well. Now, grab yourself a Sentinel. Any sentinel will do, just make sure that on that sentinel's weapon you got the Vigilante mods, armaments, fervor, supplies and offense. 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. Even if your little sentinel dies and never comes back to life, you will still retain those buffs. Uh, kill enemies, level 155, corrupted heavy goons. And this time we're gonna be unpausing them so they can hit me and I can get my glorious buffs. We're gonna activate Convenant. Save everybody in the party. Give them critical chance. Receive no gratitude ever. Ever, ever, ever. Now, Harrow is a pretty difficult frame to farm. You can buy it with plot if you so desire. But trust me, the farm is definitely worth your time. Especially if you like support the attack frames. If that, if that makes any sense. Support the attack frames. Now, my friends, the, the, the carnage is just, just beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely. Do you even see the number there? You gotta be per what was that? A 220,000 bleed out of a primary weapon? You gotta be kidding me! Kidding me! 158,000 there, but you gotta get a headshot. If you don't get a headshot, of course, you're not gonna get the 200% crit chance, you're only gonna get the 50% on body shot. It's satisfying. Landing that precise critical chance of uh, headshot on your weapon and seeing him get melted to dust 
it's 100% satisfying. The secondary fire mode is a bit harder to control. Again, you gotta go for hits. I think it'll the reload speed, man. And this is without Harrow's 2. Hey, hey, without Harrow's 2, you saw that? I didn't activate his 2 ability because of the fire rate increase. Take a look at this. Beautiful, man. Absolutely bloody fantastic. Now, because I do love the weapon and I do love this setup, we're gonna quickly try it with Lady Mirage Prime as well. Huh? Double Warframe buffs. Double Warframe buffs. But this time I'm not gonna explain the whole thing. Let's go with Lady Mirage. She just adds a whole lot of power. Okay, it's as simple as that. If you really, really want to hit something hard, <laughs> then you go with the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime. Activate Empower and her third ability for a massive Eclipse buff, and once again, Empower and her ever so lovely clones. And now I can just unload with secondary fire. It's more powerful. It is more powerful. I don't need to worry about the headshots anymore. I can just mow down enemies. A whole lot, oh, that is beautiful. A whole lot faster than before. So definitely consider my lovely Warframe. Well, it's not mine. It's Digital Extremes, but I consider her mine. Lady Mirage Prime. My friends, that's pretty much it to the Nagantica. If you want to draw some conclusions, it's a sub subjectively fun weapon that packs one hell of a punch, and I do highly recommend it. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, my friends, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Link in the cards right now. But until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.